Hey everybody, it's Miss Emma again. And I have some fun things for us today. Actually, I have two different things. I have a book, and once we're done with the book, then I have something for you to do outside. So, let's get started. This book is called Rocks of Boxing. Let's see, can you see the pages? Marion called it Rocks of Boxing. She always knew the name of everything. There across the road, it looked like any rocky hill. Nothing but sand and rocks and some old wooden boxes. Cactus and greasewood and thorny ocotillo. But it was a special place. The street between Rocks of Oxen and the houses curved like a river, so Marion called it the River Road. After that, you had to ford a river to reach Rocks of Oxen. Of course, all of Marion's sisters came, Anna Mae and Frances and little Jean. Charles from next door, even though he was 12. Oh, and Eleanor naturally, and Jamie with his brother Paul. Later there were others, but these were the first. Well, not really the first. Rocks of Oxen had always been there, and must have belonged to others long before. When Marion dug up a tin box full of round black pebbles, everybody knew what it was. It was buried treasure. Those pebbles were the money of Roxaboxin. You could still find others like them if you looked hard enough. So some days became treasure hunting days, with everybody trying to find that special kind. And then on other days, you could find one without even looking. The town of Roxaboxin began to grow, traced in lines of stone. Main Street first, edged with the whitest ones. And then the houses. Charles made his out of the biggest stones. After all, he was the oldest. At first, the houses were very plain, but they soon all began to add more rooms. The old wooden boxes could be shelves or tables or anything you wanted. You could find a piece of pottery for dishes. Round ones were the best. Later on, there was a town hall. Marion was mayor, of course. That was just the way she was. Nobody minded. And after a while, they added other streets. Frances moved to one of them and built herself a new house outlined in desert glass. Bits of amber, amethyst, and sea green. A house of jewels. And because everybody had plenty of money, there were plenty of shops. Jean helped Anna Mae in the bakery. Pies and cakes and bread baked warm in the sun. There were two ice cream parlors. Was Paul's ice cream the best or Eleanor's? Everybody kept trying them both. In Roxaboxin, you can eat as much ice cream as you want. Everybody had a car. All you needed was something round for a steering wheel. Of course, if you broke the speed limit, you had to go to jail. The jail had cactus on the floor to make it uncomfortable, and Jamie was the policeman. Anna Mae, quiet little Anna Mae, was always speeding. You'd think she liked going to jail. But if you had a horse, you could go as fast as the wind. There were no speed limits for horses, and you didn't have to stay on the roads. All you needed for a horse was a stick and some piece of bridle, and you could gallop anywhere. Sometimes there were wars. Once there was a great war, boys against girls. Charles and Marion were the generals. The girls had Fort Irene and they were all Girl Scouts. The boys made a fort on the other end of Roxaboxin, and they were all bandits. Oh, the raids were fierce, loud with whooping and stamping of horses. The whirling swords of Ocotillo had sharp thorns, but when you reached your fort, you were safe. Roxaboxin had a cemetery in case anyone died, but the only grave in it was for a dead lizard. Every year when the cactus bloomed, they decorated the grave with flowers. 
Sometimes in the winter, when everyone was at school and the weather was bad, no one went to Roxaboxen at all, not for weeks and weeks. But it didn't matter. Roxaboxen was always waiting. Roxaboxen was always there. And spring came and the Ocotillo blossomed and everybody sucked the honey from its flowers and everybody built new rooms and everybody decided to have jeweled windows. That summer, there were three new houses on the East Slope and two new shops on Main Street. And so it went. The seasons changed and the years went by. Roxaboxen was always there. The years went by and the seasons changed until at last the friends had all grown tall and one by one they moved away to other houses and other towns. So you might think that that was the end of Roxaboxen, but oh no, because none of them had ever forgotten Roxaboxen. Not one of them ever forgot. Years later, Marion's children listened to stories of that place and fell asleep dreaming dreams of Roxaboxen. Gray-haired Charles picked up a black pebble on the beach and stood holding it, remembering Roxaboxen. More than 50 years later, Frances went back and Roxaboxen was still there. She could see the white stones bordering Main Street, and there where she had built her house, the desert glass still glowed, amethyst, amber, and sea green. So that's the end. There's a note at the end, though, that's saying that even though this feels kind of like a fiction book, Roxaboxen is a real place. It is in a place called Yuma, Arizona, which is very far south from here. But don't you want to go hang out on a Roxaboxen now? I have two different challenges for you. Challenge number one is to make your own little Roxaboxen. And since we live in a forest and the mountains and not the desert, that means that your Roxaboxen is going to look a little different, right? And also because you're making your own houses and not the ones that they did. And second, you can either do this just if you can't find an idea or just for fun. I want you to find some cool thing outside. So I have a stick with a pine cone on it. And I would like you to try to come up with as many uses as you can for this thing. So we have a stick. Let's see, maybe it can be a hairbrush. Maybe it could be a shovel to dig in the ground. Um, maybe you could use it to file your nails. So I'd like you to find something. It can be a stick, it can be a rock, a pine cone, a anything you want. But I would like you to try to come up with as many uses. Do you think you can find 20 uses for this thing? What about 30? Do you think you can find 30? That would be really cool. So. I would love for you to go explore, build your own world out there, and try to come up with some new uses for things that you hadn't thought of before. I'm really excited to see what you come up with. And I miss you all. I'll see you later.